Yo, 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 this is Jake doing my first YouTube video here. I am chilling in my, oh, what's that? It's all this fuzz on this velvet lining. Um, I figured I could do chilling at this park by myself, thinking about doing my first YouTube video. Um, I don't know if I should stare into the camera this much. Should I be in the sun? Look how white I am. Ugh. Go back. So, WGU. Okay, if you're watching this, you're an RN, you want to get that bachelor's, um, you want to get it fast, you want to get it cheap, as cheap and as fast as possible, I guarantee you this is the way to go for those who can do it okay it's not for the weak hearted and it's not for everyone okay um straight out the gate with you so you don't gotta watch this video for 10 minutes first i completed my rn to bsn not full BSN. I already had, you know, this is a R, this is a transition program, RN to BSN, to get your bachelor's. You already have an associate's. You're already an RN. Um, in six months' time, pretty exactly six months, and for about $3,500, okay? This is incredible. Um, I will be straight up with you Number one, when I was talking to the enrollment counselor at the very beginning, just seeing if this was going to be the right option or not, um, he was like, I said, because I'll explain further how the semesters are set up, but he said less than 7% of all students can do it in six months. So that right there statistically tells you this is a rare, a rarity, Okay. Number two, you have to bust your butt, okay? Remember how hard original nursing school was just to get your associates and then, you know, pass your boards and all that and become an RN? I pretty much worked at that pace. You know, if you can just remember, because usually people who do their BSN, it's called the BS for a reason because that's what a lot of it is, is just BS. It's all this fluff and community stuff and extra classes that they didn't try to weigh you down with in your associates because they're just trying to pump out nurses well I worked at my at getting my BS at a pace that was equivalent to you know what felt like my associates degree so I'm not saying this is easy at all you are you are gonna have to work week in and week out um, whatever your schedule allows you multiple hours every week um to do this so quick a couple quick things about wgu um it's very unique college i think it's one of its kind right now i think a lot of colleges are going to start going towards this model because it makes sense it's cheap it's effective it works it's a it's a win win for the college and the students. Um, so how it works if you're not familiar with their system, it's competency based, and what that means is um, you it's a pass fail system. So technically there is no GPAs. Okay, you don't uh, you're not getting A's, B's, and C's. You're either passing or you're failing. Now. If you're if you're starting to ask, well, how's that gonna uh, affect me long term? If I've actually done this further research, well, I did it before I even started because I wanted to make sure this would be a degree I could carry forward. Um, and to speak to that, number one, they are nationally accredited. Number two, they get accredited by state by state. So in other words, I went to WGU North Carolina, okay, and because that's where I live. And so they go through your state's board of nursing to make sure everything is kosher. So they get nationally and um, locally accredited. Um, so you'll have to look into that when you go online um, and when you talk to an enrollment counselor, make sure everything kind of checks out for where you are. 
but they definitely are CCNE accredited. I mean, it's a it's as legit degree as you're gonna get, you know, at at any state college, uh, for for in that regards, in that it's accredited. Okay, so it's pass fail. So you either pass the class or you don't. You also pay for six month six months of school, a six month time block. Okay. There's no semesters, um, or trimesters. There's no, uh, uh, spring, summer, fall, you know, it's just six months of time and they start every month. So you start May, I started May 1st and I purchased six months of school all the way till October 31st at 11.59 p.m. You technically have to do your work um, to get it done. So, and it's about three grand per semester. The first semester, or the, uh, the first, I don't know what you wanna call them, terms, semesters, six months, is a little more expensive because you're there's like initial startup fees and you know all this little stuff that you pay for just one time. So I think it was like 3,500 bucks for the, for the first six months. And after that, it's like uh, 3,000 or 3,250, something like that. Which, can I just say, is extremely cheap, okay? When you break down just the time factor, so right, in this scenario, time literally is money, right? But if you break that down, for some colleges, that's more than half of a year. It's half of a literal chronological year, but an academic year, it's more than half because some colleges only do uh, fall and um, spring. And then even if you want to count a summer semester, um, six months is, is way more than that. And some of these, I mean, so think about this. Say you're, you're that's six grand per year, right? Three grand times two or maybe closer to seven. Well, tons of state colleges and huge universities are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand a year, anywhere in there. So this only being 7,000 a year or 3,500 for six months of straight time. I mean, and when I, I think this, it's not even, that's not even really, uh, uh, fair to compare because I'm talking you have 24 hour access and I'll get to that point but anyway even if you just compared like that it's still a tremendous deal just to pay for the time second secondly if you break it down how I did it per credit hour so I told you they didn't use a A's B's and C's they also don't you they don't call them credit hours you know in a traditional college you have a two credit hour course, three, four, but they use almost the same exact system. They just call them competency units and it's the same thing. It's two, three, four, and that kind of indicates how hard the class is gonna be, how much time you're probably gonna end up spending on that course. Like for instance, biochemistry, microbiology were all four competency units. I only had a couple four um, competency unit courses. Other, A lot of the others were just twos and threes. Um, but uh, if you break that down, the amount of competency units, or we'll just translate it to credit hours, for what I paid is so, the, the cost analysis breakdown is so low that it's it's ridiculous. I did it on my phone. I wish I had the number off the top of my head, but think about your standard community college, my community college that I went to, and I'm talking this was a this is a small community college like very rinky dink no extras no <laughs> just go to school do your work get a degree kind of college was i think 2200 2000 to 2500 per semester okay so once again we're going back to semesters that's almost that's like uh, because of the amount of credit hours I took, right? Because you're paying per credit hour, that was like five to seven grand per year. So it was almost equivalent. However, I got way less work done in that community college than I did through WGU, right? I did 17 courses in WGU 
in 24 weeks, which is six months. If you break that down, it's about, it's a course every a week and a half. Do you think I was going at that pace in community college? No way. And these are, once again, two, three, four credit hour type courses. I mean, this is microbiology. This is applied statistics. These are not, you know, not all of them are super easy courses. Um, so when you break that down, it becomes almost half the cost of a community college. Now, once again, if you did if you did WGU, if it takes you a year to do it, it would probably average out to more like a community college, which is still tremendous, um, a, a tremendous price. Okay, I did research on probably I don't know. Number one, I did research for months to years on BS RN to BSNs online, and I looked into numerous amounts of colleges. All of my state colleges, which by the way, North Carolina has some of the best and cheapest um, in-state tuition rates for RNs. So why didn't I go there? It was because of prereqs, okay? If you went to kind of a, you know, a, a non-fancy, I can't think of a, the, another word to, to describe it, a community college program like I did, which was also kind of an accelerated program, um, they're not weighing you down with any extra courses. I was already full time going, you know, I had 18 credit hour semesters. I mean, I was maxed out on coursework. So I got that done in two years. And um, there's this guy behind me. And there he goes. And we're turning. And so, anyway. A lot of colleges want you to have the statistics, the micro, the sociology, I believe, was another one that you have to have before even applying. Now, I wasn't going to go to a community college and take these courses one at a time on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7.30 to 9.30 at night. You know what I mean? There's all these crazy schedules and it's just it was so cumbersome. Well, obviously with WGU, there's none of that. They do a transcript evaluation. They say, okay, you don't have any of this stuff, but you can just do it at the same time as everything else. And you just plug away one course at a time. You get all your non-nursing courses done first. So all your prereqs. Okay, so I was doing things like sociology, U.S. Constitution. I had like a history type course. Um, uh, oh my gosh, statistics. That was a big one. Um, geez, what else? Was Care of the Older Adult a nursing course or not? I can't remember. I had like probably five, six, seven non-nursing courses. Um, they obviously were extremely memorable. <laughs> um, and so you do all of those, boom, 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 boom. Um, and then you go right into your uh, nursing courses and you just keep going, okay? So, six months, $3,500, a course every week and a half. Was I planning on doing it this way? No. I honestly was totally believing after that guy told me that only 7% do it and I spoke with my program mentor and she was like, hey, doing it in six months pretty much means you eat, breathe, and live school. Um, and I was like, Ugh, I don't have time for all that. I got wife, kids, full-time job. I mean, you know, church, activities, soccer. I mean, guys, you know what I mean? I'm not a just a, a single guy who's living at his, you know, in an apartment who doesn't work a full... No, I got everything going on that, you know, you can think of. I mean, um, and more. So it's not like I had tons of free time. So I'm like, okay, I thought a year, definitely, that's fine with me. That still is a really good pace uh, for RN to BSN programs, getting it done in one year. That's, you know, that's really good. But all I did, so I'm a floor nurse right now, right? We work 312s, 36 hours a week. Um, and so on my days off, I would go to Starbucks and I would just plug away for a couple of hours. So that's what I'll get to next. How did I do it? And why did I do it in six months? What What ended up happening is 
I just started working at what I thought was an appropriate pay, pay, uh, pace. I never, I own, like I said, I went to Starbucks two to three times a week and worked for, on average, usually about two and a half to three hours in a sitting. Sometimes I would stretch it to four. Sometimes I would could only work for two. I mean, you can just you can only sit in a Starbucks chair for so long. So Starbucks became my best friend, my go-to. Um, and I started going at this pace, and about halfway through, so it's seventeen courses. You you can see it. You get your course load, and you can. You can see every course. You can go into every course. You can look at stuff. That's another amazing thing about WGU. Um, and about halfway through, so halfway through the six months, I noticed I was halfway done with the program. So that's when the thought kind of originally occurred to me and said, you, and then I, I did, I worked out all the timing and I'm like, I'm actually going at a six month pace and I'm not trying. I wasn't trying to. I was just working as hard as I thought I needed to. Um, and so then I actually started kind of pursuing it. I even chat, you know, kind of hinted toward it, towards that with my program mentor, and she was fully on board. That's another really cool thing. You would think that a school like this, where you pay per for time, you pay to play, essentially, they would kind of be like, you know, they'd try to would hold you back or they would make you jump through hoops or they would, you know, discourage that. No, they encouraged it. She was like, Jake, if you can do it, I think you can do it. That's awesome. Go, go, go. I mean, they were cheering me on, supporting me to get it done faster. Why? I think it's simple. I think that attracts, that makes people like me do videos like this, that you watch it and it attracts more people to their school. Because in the reality, is everyone going to be able to do this? No way. It's just, that's just reality. Okay, so how? We know why, we know how I kind of did it, but what about WGU allows you to even go that fast? This is how courses are set up. There's either, every course, you you pass it or fail it. And you just keep trying until you pass it, right? So in order to pass it, you either have a, an objective assessment, which is a, a test, a multiple choice, like kind of like a final, final exam, or a performance assessment, which performance assessments are either in the form, are in the forms of tasks, okay? A course might have, a lot of courses only had objective assessments. So all they had to pass the whole course was this final exam. Some courses don't have any exams and they only have performance assessments, which are either papers, you gotta write a paper, or um, on a couple, like two occasions, I had to do a video of myself because you had to demonstrate certain skills. Um, that's about it. It's usually papers. It's a lot of, you know, it's mostly papers. You have to prove intellectually that you can put thoughts onto paper and explain and articulate concepts and ideas so that they know that you know your stuff to say you have a bachelor's degree all right a lot of the non-nursing courses for some reason were more um tests you could you could just test right through them okay but how do you do that every course that has an exam an objective assessment is gonna have a pre-assessment. And what you do is when you enroll in the course and you work with your program mentor, you say, hey, I'm ready for the next one. And they just simply hit a button and now it pops up, you hit enroll. What you're really saying by enrolling, you have to accept it. What you're really saying is that you're going to pay for that course, you know? Because if you, you know, get terminally ill or you get in a car accident and die, um, someone's got to pay for your course. So that's all. You're just accepting the responsibility of the course that you're enrolling in. Anyway, then now you can go into that course. What you do is right away you take the pre-assessment, right? So say for um, biochemistry or statistics, for example, you take the pre-assessment. Um, if you pass the pre-assessment, 
say day one, you can go right on to the objective assessment, sometimes without even asking the course instructor, your teacher, your professor. <laughs> Guys, throughout the whole thing, I literally only emailed my like three course instructors out of 17 courses. I only talked with like three of them and it was for very simple like not even questions about the coursework just like I don't know like really simple stuff like hey where's this document located and they would just send it to you oh okay thank you and then never talk to them again they do not care they do not it's not about the whole college experience if that's what you're looking for this is not that okay this is a RN to BSN factory and you're a factory worker and you're there you're a worker bee you're gonna put your head to the grind and you're just gonna pump these courses out if that's what you're looking for and you know you have that in you to just you're just a worker bee every week you can just put forth the effort and you can pass these tests and you're a good online test taker um, and all that stuff and, and you're fast and proficient at writing this is how I type <laughs> um, writing papers then this is for you okay because they are a no-nonsense college and they want to be and they're proud of it and they want you to be so anyway gone are the days of you like arguing back and forth with instructors Anyway, so objective assessments, pre-assessments, let's go back to that. You do a pre-assessment, the reason you wanna do that is number one, if, if you can pass it right away, you can go on to the final exam. Number two, whether you pass it or not, there's always a coaching report. And what's significant about the coaching report is that in the coaching report, it's gonna break down what percentage of topics are gonna to be covered on the test. So you might remember this from prior college days or even high school days where say we'll take um, biochemistry for example and you take that pre-assessment and then it might say you, you go into the coaching report and it says hemoglobin and myoglobin were, are going to be 14% of the total test. So it's only going to be 14% of your final. And say you did really good on hemoglobin and myoglobin, then you would go, okay, I don't have to study that because number one, I did good on it. Number two, it's only 14%. But say 40% of it is, you know, some other biochemical reaction that you're not very familiar with, you know, protein synthesis, blah, 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 and protein structures and you did bad on that, and that's gonna be 40% of the final exam, well now you know, okay, I need to key in, because guys, on that pre-assessment, on the coaching report, the same, it's gonna be weighted exactly the same on your final. So if hemoglobin, myoglobin is 14%, it's gonna be 14% covered on the final. It's not gonna be the same questions, obviously, but it's gonna be weighted the exact same. How do I know that? I actually asked an instructor and they said it's always weighted the same, okay? So take that pre-assessment no matter what because it's good for studying and it's good, and like I said, if you pass it, there's a B, don't come in my car, um, then you can go straight on to the final. So that's what I did, guys. Number two, what's really cool, is you can take, okay, so your finals, your objective assessments, your sit there, multiple choice questions on your computer are proctored. And this is actually, I thought was very legit about WGU. They send you a webcam, it's like a gooseneck webcam. You gotta sit it there and go exactly like I am with you. Exactly like this video is being shot. This is what you have to do while you take tests. And you get proctored by a third party video surveillance company called Proctor U. And it's some, you know, there's some call center in the middle of nowhere, you know, a lot of times it, they had accents. I think they're, they might be even overseas. And some person will come on and you start chatting and they say, okay, you're going to take this test, scan your whole room. You got to take that gooseneck, scan the whole room, scan your desk, scan you, make sure you don't have any contraband. I mean, this is legit. Then they remote into your computer. They close down all your programs. They 
um, it, they inhibit you from being able to take screenshots. Like if you have a MacBook like me, they shut off the screenshot capabilities every time. They turn your computer on do not disturb so no one can like, I don't know, message you in answers. I mean, they really make sure that you cannot cheat on these exams. So in that way, I thought, you know what, this is pretty legitimate. Um, you know, because if if some people are going to look at this college and go, oh, this is so easy, you know, you don't really have to learn anything. Well, you do. You have to really prove. It's all about proving. It's all about, see, that's the great thing about WGU is they do not care who you are, where you came from. They don't care if you've been a nurse for one year or a nurse for 25 years. If you're smart and you're just a well cultured, developed person, all right, and say you know tons about the U.S. Constitution and government already, and you're bringing that prior knowledge because you just have a love for the U.S. Constitution, and you're bringing that in. Now, when you're taking that course, and you're going, I already know all this, and you ace your pre-assessment, you can go right on to your objective assessment, and you can pass your exam, and then you're done. You don't get a, no one's trying to stop you, Nobody cares. They honestly probably don't even know you're there unless you're emailing them. I'm telling you, it's very low key and you just move right along to your next course. You don't get a yay, you don't get a, you know, whoop de do. No one cares. You just keep plugging along, going through your courses. No one's even monitoring you. Only your program mentor who you're required to talk to every two weeks. You schedule a call. The calls last less than five minutes. I mean, unless you have a million questions, but it's really, hey, how's it going? Good. Everything going good? Yep. Do you have any questions or need any help? No. Okay. Um, I'm open two weeks from now. Same time. Same time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. That's it. Um, and you got to do those calls because they did studies where it proved that it helped students progress through the program faster and on time. So um, that is the only downfall to WGU is if you do not log in and you're not working on your stuff and you're not doing your calls with your program mentor, they will just straight up suspend you or take your money and go or they'll put it on freeze. I mean, they're going to try to help you a bunch, but if you don't have the responsibility or the accountability to say, hey, to log in and do your work, they don't want you to get screwed over, if that makes sense. Because you paid for six months of time and you're going to pay them no matter what. But they just don't want you to be getting so far behind in your coursework. Um, I obviously never had, was nowhere near that problem. But for those of you who are watching this that might think you have that problem, um, the, they do have those safeguards in place to try to help students move along. I'm telling you guys, they really do want students to move along. They 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 do not. I mean, this is a no BS BS N. If I can say that. And it's legit. Um some of you, okay, so back maybe back to so that's how it all works. I hope I answered all the questions in there. That's really it at its basic core. Um, you know, if you have specific questions about certain courses or the community assessment part, let me know. I mean, I could make further videos explaining more stuff. Um, but I think I covered the time, the school, how the courses work, your teachers. Uh-oh, low battery. Um, so it is October 24th, and I am... Waiting to hear back on my last task for my last course. So if I pass this task, oh, maybe I didn't explain how tasks work. Okay, so tasks, I explained the tests, but I didn't explain the papers. The, the papers are super cool because with every paper, they give you a rubric, okay? And the rubric is going to spell out specifically all the sections you need to hit and what you need to prove to be fully competent. So, if um, there's going to be sections, and there's a guy walking here. Oh, he turned around. He saw me talking to a camera. <laughs> um, so, you can literally, I mean, guys, this is not, you're not trying to be, um, 
you know, Emerson or Hemingway here with your writing. I mean, it is very like just, it's almost robotic how you're writing. You, know, you don't have to put tons of uh, detail and, you know, all this um, uh, beautiful grammatical, you know, English composition. No, no, no. This is, a lot of it honestly is, number one, it's scientific writing, so it's kind of dry and bland at its core. But number two, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for competency. They want to make sure you just know your stuff. They don't care that you know how to describe, a, you know, a tree on a fall day. This isn't an English major. This is nursing. So you hit these competencies. If your tasks get returned, which they do, I think my tasks got returned on almost every course. Um, so don't get mad when you don't nail it on the first time. Tasks typically take about three days, What I is what I experience, what I notice, to get graded. Okay, so when you write your paper, you submit it to Task Stream, Task Stream is the platform that they use, and it's literally about, it's as easy as attaching a file to an email. It's the same format, attach, you find your paper, you save, you upload it, you hit submit, okay? And it'll show you what number you are in the queue, okay? so. This is a whole nother part of WGU that's kind of cool, is <clears throat> your teachers are not grading your papers, okay? There's way too many kids, way too many students, they're spread way too thin. No, they don't got time for that. They have an evaluation department with people, all they do is, all day long, is evaluate papers, and they just are banging these things out and they're grading them, they're using the rubric, they're grading them, and boom, sending them back. You passed, good job, or certain cri you didn't meet certain criteria. And they will send a report. Once again, kind of like the, um, the pre-assessment, you will find out exactly what you need to do to become competent on your paper. So <clears throat> if there was 10 sections on a rubric, which sometimes there are, and you just failed to meet one of them, um, you just go back into your paper, you just fix it, how they tell you, they don't tell you exactly what to write, but I mean, they give you a good enough idea of what they're looking for. And you fix it, and then you send it back, okay? It's probably going to take another two to three days to hear to hear back from them. But then you'll get an email, it goes straight to your college email, That the, it's through Gmail, but it's a WGU one. Um, and it'll say task one complete or task two complete. Certain courses have certain amount of tasks. Most courses just have, um, I would say two tasks is the average. Some might have one, some have three, most just have two, okay? Um, so that's how task stream work. That's how your papers work. You submit them, evaluators evaluate them, they send them back to you either as successful or, hey, you're almost there, just, you know, check this, check that, um, add in this kind of stuff. <laughs> so you can move through papers pretty quickly as well. I'll say the toughest thing for me was APA formatting. <laughs> so they do actually care about that too. Um, and they will get you on that if you don't. That's one whole section of every rubric. It's all the way at the bottom. It says APA, citations, professional communication. That just means you spelled your words right, you were grammatically correct, and you used APA formatting. So if you suck at that, like I did, um, you're going to learn that, which is good. You get to learn APA. And um, I use this citationmachine.net, you know, you just put all your sources into it and it spits out APA formatting for your reference list and in-text citations. So I became a master at doing that because of this site, okay? And it's totally free and, you know, who cares? They don't they don't care that you're using that. They just care that you know how to do it right. Um, so that's papers and uh, performance assessments. You're performing via writing a paper. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, so, like I said, it's October 24th. I have 31 minus 24, uh, six, seven days left 
in my six months. If you if I log into my WGU, WGU right now, it says seven days left in term. And so it's kind of like nail biting, nerve wracking. And I've already submitted my last task for my last course. And so I'm waiting to hear back. Oh, you're, I'm using my phone. You can check it on your phone where your task is at in the queue. I was like number 80 an hour or two ago. So they move pretty quickly. I mean, I, I like I said, I got to say I'm very impressed with the whole thing. So if I pass this task, which I resubmitted, by the way, I failed it the first time I resubmitted it, um, which means there's a higher likelihood that you're going to pass it because, like I said, you're addressing those specific situations, just the little things that they're looking for and you know what to target in on. There's a high, if I pass this task, I graduate. Yay! <laughs> Do I get a raise at work? No. Do I get a piece of paper in the mail? Yes. Do I get to frame it and put it on my wall? Yes. Do I get a new badge at work that says BSN? Maybe. <laughs> Do I maybe get a better job in the future? Maybe. We'll see. But overall, guys, if I can leave you with the overall comment, very, very pleased. Very good. And I promise I'm not being paid by WG. <laughs> They don't even know I'm doing this video. I just want to help nurses. I was that nurse that debated this for probably whew, years, three to four years. I've been a nurse for six years. I've worked, um, you know, in the hospital, health department, um, and that's about it. Yeah, public health and acute care. So I've done both. So I was in that public health scene where that's actually a lot of your VSN that actually helped me out a lot I'm not gonna lie okay so my previous nursing experience probably helped out a lot in doing this um, but that's the beauty of WGU if you've been a nurse for 10 15 20 25 years um, you have all this knowledge and and they're saying hey we want you to be able to come in and use that knowledge right away. If you can pass these courses fast, you already know the answers to these questions, then do it, man. We're not going to make you sit in a classroom for four weeks learning crap you've already done for the last 20 years of your nursing practice. Man, just take that test, fly through it, and move on to the next course. Yeah, dog. They want gangster nurses, okay? I'm just kidding. Um, you guys can do but you can do it, okay? I'm telling you, like I said, oh yeah, I explained how much work I put into it. I mean, like I said, guys, two to three hours, two to three times a week at most. Not counting my test taking. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Test taking, the proctored exams, you can do that literally at any, it's 24 hours, right? So you get to schedule your exam when you want to take it. You can literally do it at 2, 3, 4 in the morning or 2, 3, 4 in the afternoon. Anytime, anywhere, it's 24 hours. That is dope. That's why I think it's way cheaper. I know it is. It's way cheaper, way better, way faster than any college you will find out there. Because where can you do that? At what community college or state college can you do that? You can't. Even online, you gotta, okay, exams are for this week. You know, gone are the days of um, uh, finals, finals week. Oh, I gotta cram, I gotta cram, I got all my finals in one week, you know. That's stupid. It's old and outdated. I mean, I know it's not. I mean, I know tons of colleges are still doing it that way, but I think WGU is pioneering something truly great. Um, I'm thankful for them. I was a guy who thought, you know what, I'm never really going to be able to do my BSN because I'm I'm caught up on all these stupid prereqs I got to do. And um, WGU just, they smashed all barriers. If you're an RN and you're making RN money, I mean, get your life together. Save 3,000 bucks, guys. That's not hard, okay? However long it takes you to save $3,000. Or dang, take out a loan, I don't care. Three grand, three grand, I mean, save it. 
it's not that big of a deal. Pay for your car. And you don't have to do that, by the way. I don't know all their financial stuff because that's what I did. I just paid it all on a credit card and paid it off later. You know, do that. Um, but you don't even have to do that. I think there's like a payment plan as well. So anyway, um, you, you don't even have to save the whole three grand, but just do it. And then if you want to do it like me, just you know what? You you need support from your family. I'm not going to get all philosophical and emotional, but have a support person and then just say, guys, for this next six months, it is grind time. Tell your family, tell whoever, your, your partner, say, look, we might not be able to be going out as much as we usually are. We're not going to, which by the way, I want to put that into perspective too. I went through Hurricane Florence, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Okay, that's where I live. Now you can come and stalk me, murder me, whatever. <laughs> we got slammed by Hurricane Florence. I was stuck in my hospital for six days providing care to patients. My family, I sent away. I mean, we're talking, you know, some pretty high stress stuff. I've had cars break down. I had my roof damaged from the hurricane. Um... And then as far as that's all kind of like unexpected life stuff, but as far as normal life stuff, guys, I still went on little mini vacations with my wife. I still, like I said, was involved. I didn't have to pull back from anything. I still, my son plays soccer. I mean, I still did everything I normally do. Everything. I mean, I did not, I really didn't sacrifice, because what do nurses do on their days off anyway? They chill, they do nothing, they take care of the kid. they they go out, they, they do something. So all you're doing is taking that, that normal time that you would normally be, dang bro, look at that bicep, I'm just kidding, um, that you would normally be doing nothing and you're using it to study and to bang out courses. So get it done, WGU, the way to go. We're at 42 minutes long. This is a monster video. I'm sorry, it's so dang long. I will figure out how to create those little links that I see on YouTube videos that you can jump to certain sections that way you don't have to watch a 42 minute long video. All right, Jake Farnsworth, out.